Welcome everyone to Yana Altima. You're just on mute at the moment. Of course, now, now, now you can hear me. Thank you. It was a nice introduction and thank you. A good afternoon from my side to all of you. It's a pleasure for me to have this opportunity to tell you about our Impro project. Um, I know that you have had a good ICF lecture and I'm trying to avoid the repetition. So I'm focusing on the Impro project. And in the end, I will present some topical issues from the WHO perspective. And as you can see, our Impro project started in January this year. So at this moment, we do not have a lot of results. I can tell what have we done about ICF issues and what we are planning to do during the last two years. And please follow up our websites. The left side is our official, official English language website. And the second one is the Finnish language, language website. And I will send my hand out after this presentation. And in the end of this presentation, there is a, a question and answer session, but you can also write answer uh, questions to the chat box. And I hope that if somebody of you can, I, I, um, I can uh, pick up them and tell me in that in the end of the presentation. Okay, so some few words about me. Uh, uh, so I'm a senior researcher at Yamp University Applied Sciences. Uh, physiotherapy is my background, but nowadays I'm working in the functioning issues. I have a lot of national activities concerning functioning and, and ICF or how to measure functioning. That's the Toimian functioning net, network database in Finland. Uh, I also have uh, several international activities concerning WHO. So I, I, I am a collaborator of functioning and disability reference group. That is a group who take care of um, ICF issues in that network. And also, I'm also uh, acting or working in a Nordic uh, ICF network. And these uh, activities are mostly without any payment. So I have no interest or conflicts. Okay, then my presentation. First background, why we wanted to have that impro project. So we know last uh, that uh, we know that one in three people are estimated to be to be living with a health con health health condition that benefits from rehabilitation. There was an article from WH or early in this year. So the need is predicted to increase in the coming years. And despite, despite of the huge need, rehabilitation services are limited in much of the world. Uh, several activities are proposed and these in, interprofessional and person-centered collaboration is one of them. And that's why we would like to focus in that aim. There are a few pictures on the territory, territory background. So we need inter, interprofessional education for health professionals, as well as for students. So we need to learn how to use interprofessional 
education and collaboration in teams. And the collaboration means that there are two persons from two or more, more health professionals. So they are working together. And this uh, education is needed both for students and practical rehabilitation workers. Uh, a lot of attention has been for interprofessional collaboration or education, but we know that there is a somehow some kind of gap between competency levels uh, when we are comparing students and what's needed in rehabilitation practice. And we are discussing about life learning education, and this is one main focus of our project. And uh, we are discussing about how to change roles between students, lectures and professionals and how we can learn together. Um, the third background is IPE, Interprofessional Education and CP collab Collaborative Practice. This is a, a team that WHO has published in 2010 and there are several, several articles of papers and uh, websites concerning these issues. This picture is from their document. Uh, in the right hand side, you can see the document and a link where you can find it. And the main idea is in the picture in left hand uh, side, we are having an education site. So the basic background, we are somehow a local needs and education, but it's known that our healthcare systems is fragmented. And from, from education, there are a, a lot of many, many, many health and education systems, and they need to collaborate. Uh, in, within one organization or with several organizations. And this is the key issues that in that way we can aim to opti optimal healthcare services and of course rehabilitation. And then the outcomes from persons is better. Their health or their functioning will be improved. Uh, we found that ICF is a, an educational and critical tool. That's why we choose it. And as you know, there are many several reasons why IC has, has been advocated. So we know that the functioning of persons should receive more and more attention. And when we are talking about cooperation or collaboration, we need a same fame framework and the ICF is that kind of framework. And it includes shared decision-making and all, of course, person-centered approach by the professionals. These are the key uh, factors or issues that ICF is, and that's why we want to concentrate on it. Uh, main purpose, purposes of IMPRO projects are written here. So we want to improve interprofessional skills and competencies both in education and in practice. We also want to deliver a set of basic and advanced modules of functioning according to the ICF. 
and um, the idea is to strengthen regional bonds between higher education institution and rehabilitation centers. So we are focusing the rehabilitation, not the whole social and health care. And after this improv project, we would, would like to have high quality educational methods and materials, both interprofessional education and ICF. For for students and professionals. But uh, now I, I will tell a few words about IPE competencies and then focusing on the ICF in this presentation. Here you can see a picture how we want to explain who we are and what we are doing and what the collaboration of different parties are. So the name is Interprofessional in Action. So we have uh, four countries, Finland, Netherlands, Belgium, and Austria. And each country has uh, one focus area. So as you can see here in Finland, our focus is ICF and in the Netherlands, they have a student run learning board or student students um, activities. The Austria focus on person centered and interprofessional education training, educational training and Bel Belgium, they focus on IPE. And there is also a linkage uh, inside all the countries. So there is a higher education institution mm -hmm. and a rehabilitation center. The so, uh, yellow ones are applied universities in each country and the red ones are rehab rehabilitation centers. In Belgium, there is no one, but they are working with the hospital. We have different kinds of roles, the patient, care provider, coach, educator, learner. The student can be a learner also, a professional can be a learner. And so the roles and act actors uh, are combined. And the overall aim that if the organization, the if the rehabilitation centers has same amount of professionals, when they are working in a interprofessional way, they can treat maybe more patients or the quality of the rehabilitation will increase. So in the last end, the patients are the one uh, whose quality of life will be better. And all the materials we are producing will be included on our website. At this moment, I'm sorry, we don't, we do not have that kind of material yet. In this picture, you can see our countries and our focus areas. And here you can see um, also the project managers in each country. Hans University of Applied Sciences from the Netherlands is a coordinator and Andrea Werk Workman is a coordinator of the whole project. And there's a manager in each uh, organization. And uh, this is a Erasmus Plus Knowledge of Alliance project. So uh, it was needed to have at least four countries and it was needed to have a clinical or rehabilitation um, institutes uh, organizations, private organization, it was, it was needed when we made this application. You can see our logos in the bottom of this picture. We have also associate partners. Originally we had seven, but now 
we had a one more from Germany rehabilitation organization in there. Uh, you might realize or know most of the names, if they are also words in here, but I'm not going to take my time to explain this in detailed way. Okay, then more about uh, our uh, work packages or the idea how we are going to work. Uh, you can see here our work packages. In the left, left hand side, there are some uh, overall work packages, management, quality, and communication and dissemination. And we have two theoretical Pack work packages. So they are this IPE, interprofessional competencies, and ICF, work package four and work package five. And in the right hand side, you can see what we are aiming to deliver after these three years. And I'm going to next tell a few words about work package four and then focusing what we have done on the ICF and what we are planning to do. Uh, our main idea is that all of us, our, our six partners are working together within each work package. So it, it took time to organize how we are going to work because it's so many issues ongoing at the same time, and we are supposed to participate each or the work packages. And next few words about work packets four. So we would like to make a our own uh, competence framework and that we can use within this project and hopefully also after that. Uh, the main uh, source is the WHO Rehabilitation Competence Framework. It was adapted a little bit and this um, maybe was the webinars when we got known to each other the impro and your rehab project because we were listening to the same webinar, WHO webinar. And this is, but it, there were some adaptations that was made from Belgium partners because they made a, a large literature trying to find out what competencies are published. And there were maybe almost 20 of them. They made a report for competencies. And after that, we all could uh, comment on it. And then um, they are creating a report that can be used for pilots in work packets five, six, and seven. And they are making a guideline about learning outcomes and competencies. And that Pilot version will be used during, during mm -hmm. next year mm -hmm. and maybe after that. But I'm so sorry, currently all the material is restricted, restricted only for our participants. So I can't present the results to you and maybe you can find later on something from our website. And this WHO Rehabilitation Competence Framework, there is no specific ICF issues in it. And then uh, we are discussing and thinking what kind of ICF competencies should be. We don't know it yet. We have some ideas. And I'm very interested if you have discussed some ICF competence frameworks, what is needed, or if you had done, done something concerning 
these issues. And I'm very glad if you can tell me after my presentation, if you have think this kind of issues, because this could be a way to cooperate between our two projects. Then about ICF, why ICF? Uh, I think that you know a lot of it and you know what it uh, positive aspects are. Also, you might know some negative issues on it, but it's a big conceptual framework and common language between all professions and it also a common language between countries. So it's that's what is very usable and a lot of used. And but the good idea is that it facilitates states a holistic consideration for individuals who experience with disability. So there are different domains of function functioning, and then it's a very good uh, tool for interprofessional cooperation. And uh, it also provides a framework that incorporates basic perspectives. And it, it is a big issue to guide meaningful rehabilitation goals and interventions. And that's why when we were planning our application, it was no question that ICF would be a theoretical background of our application. We know, and it is known, that the use of ICF will enhance in the profession and person-centered practice. I know that you all agree with this, but it can happen only if the ICF theory and background are fully understood. And in Finland, we use ICF research grants two-day workshop training for professionals, as you heard in the early in my presentation. But in education for students is not so clear. There was a lot of differences, for example between applied universities, universities and different schools. And we noticed that the differences were even larger in other countries between professionals and students and big, large and larger between countries. So there is a lot of um, variations how this ICF education will happen. And I know I don't do not know how many ICF courses you are going to have. I know oh, at least you have one. I read it a very good presentation on ICF. And now we are going in our impro, we are going to use or make some common pra practices between these four countries. So our specific aims are, so we would like to create a solid knowledge of functioning based on the ICF. So for students, lectures and professionals, and they should have the common understanding how the ICF can be used. Uh, this is one aim. Secondly, we would like to develop and implement ICF-based tools and practices that can be applied in education and also in practice, for instance, in a rehabilitation clinic. Because in that way, the service to the patients is broader, more by by a social perspective, and these are our two main aims or objectives during these three years. We have started both of these issues, but they are ongoing. 
and the focus is interpersonal education and collaborative practice and person-centered approach. We know it, uh, but we would like, like to know how it happens in different organization, organizations. And that's why we collective needs in ICF place clinical practice and advance ICF models. So what are the needs in applied universities and what are the needs in rehabilitation centers? We would like to know because we realize that variety of practices. Last June, we organized a webinar, one in each country. So we had four webinars. They lasted 1.5 to two hours. And uh, there were almost 50 participants um, in these webinars. Most of them for higher education universities and 15 from the rehabilitation centers. And we, would, uh, we asked them what is needed to enhance, enhance ICF knowledge and use, and what are the needs for ICF-based tools and new practices. The workshops, they were very informative. And we got few results, what we are now aim, aiming to make a, a correct, maybe, maybe I can say in that way. So it was noticed that we need both ICF theory when we are educating ICF, but we really need a motivation part because we found that there are some attitudes that do not enhance the use of the ICF. Uh, one, one main message was that ICF is beyond the codes. There, in some instances, uh, some organizations we're focusing the codes. Oh, we can't use them. They are not person-centered and they can't see beyond the codes. So it's needed to see that ICF is a part of the rehabilitation process rather than a blue jungle of code. This was a rehabilitation, one rehabilitation center comment, but we um, got totally different comments from maybe few rehabilitation centers or from the universities or from the lectures. So it was, we found that ICF was not seen in the way that we planned when we started or when we made the application. And this was a good tip so it's very good to explore attitudes and practices in your own country or in your own organization or in your team, because there might be quite opposite, opposite attitudes, maybe within one uh, organization or one uh, applied universities. And these uh, attitudes should be handled. I don't know if you have done this kind of uh, questions, this questionnaires or evaluations in your rehab project, but it's very good. It's opened our eyes. Here you can see some um, comments from some parties. So there were challenges and there were possibilities, not only the negative side. So there were a lot of possibilities and it was good, but the challenges are the issues we try to handle or back up uh, when we are making our education plans or making our courses. Um, so in the applied universities, in the up, upper space, so there were different in the interpretations of the ICF between studies 
even in one applied university, there have different uh, attitude, uh, ways to look ICF. So the students will get different information depending in the profession they are studying. And in, there was a comment, what's the role, voice of the patient during filling in the ICF? Even if our aim is person-centered practices, it was not seen that ICF is a tool for person-centered practices. And we got quite many comments that students need concrete examples. So the examples are missing and I can agree with that. So from the rehabilitation centers, there is lack of communication, interprofessional communication, and uh, even they are rehabilitation centers with different professions. Uh, the one problem was that in our center, only physiotherapists would use the ICF. And that organization, they had also uh, occupational therapists, psychologists, dietitian, nurses, but only physiotherapists used ICF. So ICF is not a common language. And one comment was that we read ICF from top to down, start at the disorders, and that is the way how many, uh, what, is, what are doing mostly in the Western countries. So that's the way how we read it. They said that they, we would like to start with the patient at, as a whole, whole person. That's the idea about the ICS. How come they are not doing it in that way? It's not needed to read from top down or left to right. So to, please to see the, the patient as a whole person. There was also a lot of possibilities. So they think that it's a good tool. ICF is helpful. And, and if ICF is properly implemented, there will be gain of time and there will be better communication between the care providers. So they are motivated. Okay, after that, uh, before that, we made a pilot course one, and now we are going to have a pilot course two in this November. It's a basic course, so to know what the ICF is. And um, because we have four countries, it's not possible to have uh, education face to face, and we decide to implement the WH of ICF e-learning tool. But we noticed uh, in the first pilot, we used only the ICF e-learning tool and it did not work. Then now we added a introduction and motivation part and videos and we explained, explained basic information and terminology before the e-learning course using slides and videos. And then we had a reflection seminar after that and eat, taste and feedback. So this is now the course we are piloting and we are going to run this course, course next year and maybe hopefully get it in the way that we can publish it. So what's happening next? Um, we are doing what we have done and uh, what we have done in the work packets four and five, uh, the other uh, work packages are uh, utilize our information. Work packet six is concentrating for international learning intervention, and next year they are uh, evaluating it. And work packets five, the rehabilitation centers can have field visits and chase information. And what you can find now in our website, there is, is a collection of promising IP approaches based on online questionnaire from work packet six. You can already also find this information. Yeah, and this 
two ones, they are actually starting the exams next year. So this is a key message that I see as I said a few words before this, and I'm not going to read them again, but um, uh, I was surprised that it was not seen that ICF uh, is a common language, that it's not person-centered. And I know that you have heard it can be used in different levels, micro, macro, and muscle. That's a good issue and how, can, how, how, you, how, how you can use it. Uh, in the end, some ICF material, I saw them quite quick, quickly because I noticed that time is running. And then a few words about WHO family of internal classification and what's happening at this moment concerning the ICF. Uh, I would like to share some uh, material on or some articles concerning about ICF competencies. And uh, I do not know if you really know this earlier, but these are quite new published last year. And they are the background material we are using now when we are developing ICF education. So um, this article from Moran et al, they presented ICF competencies and genetics with the IC, IPA competencies with the ICF. There are many, many issues and these are the ones we are planning to use when we are making the ICF competencies. And uh, the sec second one, is a paper from Ingrid Sultan and her colleagues. And they made a tips for teaching to ICF. Maybe this is, uh, oh, this is for teaching, but th this has very good information that students can also use. It's not only for teaching. And this, that they uh, concentrated about values, roles, communication, teamwork, and have different phases how uh, ICF can be used to enhance a biopsychosocial approach. Uh, they also brought 12 tips, and they are almost five pages in that paper how they explain how you can use the tips. And there were many good issues for applied universities and also for the students or professionals in the clinical practice. And maybe um, uh, the last one is the only one I would like to read. read. Read here. So keep it real. Provide learning opportunities. So in, the, in that way you can make the integration. And they published a scheme about learning activities. What is case-based scenarios in the left side? Some examples. And so learning outcomes, what they are, and assessment targets and how you can use this. And this is one way you can utilize this uh, paper tool because it's also not only person-centered, but it is also for organizations or institutions, how they can use it. Okay, this is in the wrong place. But this is about our impro. I will change the slide, it should be earlier earlier before those papers. But um, what happens this year? So we are continuing ICF basic courses in each country. We are developing the advanced ICF course and pilot it. And we are collecting material to this. And this is one way if you have really some uh, material that is uh, more than the basic ICF theory, we will 
I will be very, very, very happy to hear your examples or how you are going to use it because it's nice to have different examples uh, from different countries because that's what was asked. So in that moment, in this moment, the rehabilitation centers, they are developing icf tools and practices based on their own needs. We might have several tools and practices in each country, and we are going to evaluate this and share the material. And these are the materials we are going to publish, not next year, but year after that, in the last year of our project. And then lastly, a few words about uh, WHO. So it's family of internal classifications. Uh, I know that it's mentioned uh, during your ICF course you had. And I hope that the next material I'm going to present, it's um, too familiar to you, you, but I would like to show it because in Finland, we have noticed that um, uh, lectures or professionals they are not familiar what uh, what is happening now in WHO. Then about ICF, this is the new logo. They are making a new websites. And uh, what is, um, I think that you know that ICF book was published in 2001. And the categories that are mentioned in it, or the codes, they are outdated. Official updates to the ICF are available as annual list of changes. So please do, do not, if you have your own language uh, ICF book before the changes, please do not use the categories and codes because they are not update. You can find the new ones. And what's coming? So it's a lot of discussion about uh, between itchy and ICF. I will say a few words about itchy later on. And of, of course, there's, there is a work on for harmonization between ICF and other regulator classifications. So this is a lot of uh, work, what we have to do. Uh, this is a picture because now they are making a new uh, ICF. This is a classification, it's called ICD-11. And this is the first time when they noticed about functioning. So this ICD-11 is not only diseases, it's not only morbidity. So functioning assessment, assessment is included. And this is some great, great issue of new issue. So the ICD-11, it has a new section for functioning assessment. The ICF is behind them, but there is said that they, that they um, advise to use uh, ICF-based instruments to assess functioning. So they meant the disability assessment CPU FUDAS and model disability survey. Uh, at this moment, I have no idea how these should be used or what kind of electronic systems they really have, but they have, this is the suggestion they have made. And about itch, uh, it's, also, it's already almost ready. It will be ready next year, at least for implementation and some uh, implications. And what each is, is international classification of health interventions uh, and report and analyzing health inter intervention for all professionals from doctors to so social workers, nurses, rehabilitation workers, for everyone. And each is built around T axis. There is target, action, and means. The target is the entity on which the action is carried out, and it 
is explained and classified by ICF. Now, now you can see the WHO family of international classification. ICF is included all of three classifications in some way, in somehow. Then I'm not going to go deep in on action and means, but it's action target and means is methods by which action is carried out. And, but the good idea is that ICF is in there. Then now I'm open your questions and comments and I'm going to stop my presentation. So I don't know how many chat questions there are or there are other comments, but please now the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Jana. Uh, I'm Aya. Uh, I didn't have a chance to, to meet with you before our uh, lecture, but before your lecture, but I think it was excellent uh, lecture for us to think about future of our project. And uh, a lot of uh, interesting information because uh, today we listened to ICF uh, related with um, uh, interventions uh, related to uh, ICD and related to, of course, uh, uh, classification of uh, competences and skills and knowledge uh, rehabilitation professionals should have. And now, actually, we have a lot of to think about how we implement our education programs in each country and how we educate rehabilitation professionals. And I agree with you that it's uh, very diverse from one country to another country and each country has their own health system, uh, legislation and uh, uh, education criteria, which is based on professional standards of rehabilitation professionals in each country. Like in Latvia, we just approved a new professional standard for physiotherapy professionals. And listening to you, I'm actually doubting whether we are in a correct path with our professional standard. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, I have I have just few questions. Did you look at the education level uh, when you were um, screening through professional competences? Uh, like, for example, we know that in the physiotherapy, there is a physiotherapy assistant, physiotherapist, advanced uh, physiotherapist. How it goes together with uh, like direct access professionals and direct access, is there any uh, elaboration of those levels and uh, access uh, options to rehabilitation team? Uh, so this is about uh, our IPE competencies, I guess. And um, that's one reason why they made, so the Belgian partners, they made uh, a, some modification on adaptations because uh, somehow they feel that it, the level, the w, WHO level um, started too high so we need some lower competencies also. This was one adaptation they made, or we made with after discussion on it. And now we are going to evaluate, uh, is this really going to work? Okay, yeah. And, and definitely we are, we would be happy to continue collaboration. I don't know like whether it would be like associated or partner collaboration or any type of uh, professional contribution we could make from our part uh, because of course knowing uh, that in Ukraine this all process in a in a in a basic uh, beginning level and of course it would be nice to present uh, the correct way how to develop rehabilitation system in a country where the system is still developing rather than after a while to see that 
this system had to had to be built in a different way. So it, it, for those countries building these reputation systems, it's even more important to understand uh, link between ICF education programs. Uh, and, and professional competencies of rehabilitation professionals. So we would be very happy that after a while we could get access to outcomes of your project and use them in our countries. So I'm just screening through chat if there is any other information or, or, or questions. There are a lot of thanks to you and uh, very interesting lecture. Uh, so, yeah, basically, I think there are no many more specific questions. Um, so again, thank you very much for joining today, and we really appreciate information you provided. And and if possible, we could be happy to have your slides. Uh, just to share with those uh, who couldn't participate because there was very important, valuable information about articles and publications and uh, would be very good to let know other people about uh, these sources. Yeah, I, I will send them, yeah. Yeah, you can send to me and Kuak and they'll share afterwards. Yeah, you, you, yeah, you can pass it over. Yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you so much. Okay, I'm not sure if Kuak 